Good morning, everyone. It's mid-afternoon. I am Ryan Cruzy. This is Cruzy Originals. This is another day here at the shop doing things on motorcycles. Today we're going to be finishing off the chopper. I'm probably going to take the chopper for a ride. The big old chopper, the big old long fat tire chopper is going for a ride. And then I'm going to work on trying to knock out the rest of that Dyna that we are building to sell. And I'm going to throw a whole bunch of Cruise Original stuff on it and knock out the rest of it. Possibly, I don't know if I can get it done that fast. Depends on how much time I get to ride this guy. But moving forward, that's what we're doing today. This tool is about 500 bucks. It's a Matco. And my Matco guy had been my Matco guy for like 10 years. And Matco sold out to some big corporation. And they basically forced all the old boy, boys out of the, all the old Matco guys out to bring in some new, less paid guys in replace of them. So when they did that, Robbie, my Matco guy, was having a wholesale. And he goes, hey, uh, I was like, damn, how much for this old Matco stool right here? He goes, well, they're like 500 bucks. I go, well, how much for me? He goes, 50 bucks. Get the f off my truck. And I was like, woohoo, $50 chair. Because it's like long travel suspension in a pre-runner. I can roll over nuts and bolts with this thing. It never jams up. It's unreal. And if you've ever been a mechanic for a long period of time and known the power of having a good stool that doesn't go, uh, 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 all the time, and just, oh, God, damn. Son of a bitch! Like, I rolled around on office chairs that I pulled out of the dumpster for many years. You pull the back off of them, you got a stool, and they jam up on everything. Oh, and you get on this, it's like long travel. I got a pair of 30, aired down 37s on this thing. It's magical. Now Robbie has a new tool truck, works for Gear Wrench, which I bought a bunch of Gear Wrench ratchets. They cost full set of gear inch ratchets of all sizes cost as much as one snap-on ratchet and I like them better than my snap-on ratchets. They're smoother, they're better, it's nice shit. Okay, so I gotta put a petcock in this thing. I don't know why they call it a petcock. Does anybody know why they call them petcocks? I would like to know that information. Give me some questions or answers down below why they call them a petcock. My theory is if you pet a cock long enough, it'll pour some fluid out of it eventually. And that's what you do with this thing. You turn the knob, you crank her back and forth. I don't know why they call it a pet cock. It's a weird name. Why is it called a cock in the first place? Didn't we look that up? What was it? It was something to do with... Like cock oh, something. a cock was uh, originally like a faucet. So like, they, I think they called faucets cocks or something like that. And I think that's how why they started calling dicks cocks. Because they were like faucets. You'd turn them off and on and you'd... Shh, take a, You would urinate from them. <laughs> but... The faucet, when you turn it on to wash your hands, it's just urinating clean water on your hands in a different direction. And you turn the old the cock on. So next time you're brushing your teeth and you're down there just sucking some water out of the old cock, <laughs> just remember what you're doing. You know the toilet was invented by a man named John Crapper? And that's why they call it a crap, taking a crap. She would go to the crapper. This is a I hope that's the right size. This is a pet cock. You can tame these. I mean, you can tame a cock, you can tame a wrench. But I'm gonna try and screw this in here and hopefully that's the right size because that looks a little big to me. It seems that the cock fits perfectly in the hole so I'm gonna put some lubricants on it so I can get her all up all the way in there and it seals in nice and tight. I thought I brought that shit over here already, didn't I? Also, one convenient thing on this pet cock, it is round so there's nowhere to put a wrench on it to actually tighten it when you put it up in there that's really nice of them that makes things so much easier so i'm going to get a hose clamp a little bit of <whistles> pipe dope around this guy seal it off we're going to crank it up in there and then i'm going to hose clamp this dude off we're going to put gas in it again and then hopefully this is the last gosh darn time i have to drain this gas tank and we can just ride this forking thing up and down the street, I'm gonna get some Oakleys, you know, the old Oakley bug eyes. I should have grown a goatee, I didn't have enough time. But other than that, I'm pretty much ready to ride this bad boy. Old version, one we took out, see how it's nice and square, so you can put a wrench on it and tighten it in. New version, round. Should I just grab it with some channel locks and just give her hell or what? 
just like that. Hey, sorry to interrupt your guys' regularly scheduled program, but I just want to tell you that we got shirts back in stock. The hoodies are back. Can you see it? We've got long sleeves on the new guy. Look at that, look at how nice he looks. We got t-shirts and we've even got some new shit. This is our second contest winner for the t-shirt design. This is also the cruisy ticket shirt, I guess is what we'll call it. It's pretty dope. Actually, I think it's super dope. I'm really pumped on it. These are all available on cruisyoriginals.com. And don't forget, April 6th, we're putting on one of the largest events Bike Week in Arizona has ever seen. Biggest stunt competition, lowrider car hopping, drift competitions on motorcycles. It's going to be wild. Bike shows, everything. Come out, be a part of it. Family friendly for everyone. Peace. I think I'll put a wrench on the nipple and crank it around that way. Because, yeah, there's no goddamn way I could turn this thing around by hand. Mm. That's stupid. Man. Whoever produces this in Bangladesh is gonna hear about it, I tell you what. It's a good thing I got tricks. I might have a problem. Yep, god damn it. Hell yeah. Fatty, the fatty one. Oh, look at this one. Yeah, the fatty, the original. Give me an original fatty. <laughs> I got you. It's <laughs> right, good shit. All right, but you ever had the original fatty meat stick? Goes right along with a pet cock. Whew, I'm pushing the limits here. Mm -hmm. This is not even the right pet cock. It's supposed to be a back spout. This is a side spouter. We're gonna make it happen. I feel like I should probably bolt this up before I try and wrestle this dude on here. Whew, that was heavy. right there. Get my foot sucked up in that awesome belt drive. I feel just like Jesse Lames. This thing scares me, honestly. I'll be back. It is comfortable, like you're sitting in a really comfortable position. You can't get to the brake pedal because all this bullshit's in the way. You gotta like brake like this. And the back brakes, that Sproder shit, almost is non-existent. Like I had to, had to stop at a stop sign back there and there's not much real stopping. These are definitely show pieces, less of go pieces. And the front end feels like, even at like 20 miles an hour, I feel like I'm riding it like this. That big ass fat tire on the back, it handles so terrible. Like trying to get around a corner is like, you're just fighting for your life the whole way around. Yeah. There's so much flex in the front end. Oh man, it's something else. I wouldn't ride this shit. Mechanically sound, well built. She runs good. Let's see if the tank holds up and see if it starts pissing gas or not. If it don't, that's great. Then I will put a helmet on and I will take it for some real rides and like see how she goes. It's powerful it's and I'm just barely it's a new motor so just riding it real slow and chopping it and kind of seating the rings but it is a lot of motor in a very little motorcycle a very poor handling motorcycle I would say like I can't believe this is a thing man people used to ride this shit all over the place and like I, I you know it's hardcore you're hardcore because it's you're just holding on you're holding on for dear life I'm used to bikes that like handle well and they're like set up to like ride really well and handle really well and have really good suspension and really good geometry and neck, the rake and trails all dialed. And this is definitely a lot different. It's, it's, I don't know, it scares me. I ain't bullshitting. Riding this thing scares me. And the fact that anybody's gonna ride this thing scares me. But I mean, mechanically, it's, it's as dialed as it can be. I need to put some more miles on it. It looks like the carburetor, everything's holding together good. Fuel is holding together good. It is a, very fucking powerful motor. Very powerful motor. I guarantee this thing would do wheelies just giving it a little bit of gas. This thing would give a do a wheelie just giving her a little pepper for sure. Nope, there she goes. She's leaking. Fucking cunt. Doesn't leak when you're riding it. Flooding the carburetor from sitting like that, which it probably flood the motor out too. No leaks? Nothing? Oh, one little drop, but that looked, could have been residual. Let me shake it off. Like peeing in the woods with no toilet paper? Yeah, no. 
we're good. That might be a little sticky later, but I'm having fun. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been in the woods with some chicks. It tastes different. Okay. <laughs> Still no, no gas? See what she does. I'm going to put a jacket and a helmet on and take her for a little neighborhood ride ski and uh, see how she goes. Maybe I'll film it, maybe I won't, but you guys will find out right now. Goddamn scary thing, man. Ah! I feel like everything on this bike couldn't be more ergonomically incorrect. Super wide tire on the back, they don't want to lean at all to go around the turn. Oh, it's kind of like you gotta muscle it and just hold off for dear life. Especially when it makes a shitload of power like this one. So we did a bunch of riding, all that stuff. It rode, I mean, it rides good for a chopper. It rides good. It's a chopper with a long front end on it. It's not the best handling thing. It is a rocket ship for sure. Uh, master cylinder was leaking a little bit. I just took care of that. The carburetor, if you leave the fuel on, it leans so hard, it like fills the, overfills the carb and then she leaks a little bit over the overflow. But those are just chopper problems. But for now, she's gonna sit here. Tomorrow, I'm gonna ride it some more, and I'm gonna try and like throw like five or ten miles on it every day for the next week or so, and just kind of keep putting miles on it and kind of making sure she's dialed. And then I'm gonna send her on down the road, hopefully to never be seen again, which never will be seen again because I don't want to touch it again. Now I'm gonna go. I got a couple more hours to kill today, so I'm gonna go get on the old Super Glide over there that we've been working on. I'm gonna try and finish the rest of the handlebar front end section, so that is completely done. We got the wheel back from Cash from getting vapor blasted. That thing looks unreal. It looks unwheel. It looks like a brand new wheel. If you guys remember how bad it looked in the last video or videos ago, I don't remember, but it was pretty bad. It was pretty gnarly. So it looks really, really nice. It is uh, ready to go back in the bike. So I have a brand new tire up there. We're gonna throw a new Dunlop 401 on it and uh, some new bearings and we'll get that all back together. And we're just gonna get back to hammering on that motorcycle for a little while until the end of the day. And then it's a, uh, I'm going home. It's meat and rice time. Handlebars are mostly done. The wiring's in. I need to clean this up a little bit. Uh, this side's done. Clutch is done. But I got to pull all this off to do the mid controls. So adjusting it was kind of a waste of my time now to look back on that. Hindsight is 30, 40, 75, you know. And then headlights on. All this stuff is nice and pretty now. I'm working on this side. Got an ODI throttle tube. We're going to put the bare grip on this side. And I'm gonna clean this dude up and then just uh, keep on pulling wiring and hopefully those throttle cables line up where I want them to line up and meat and rice. It's nice, meat and rice. It's five o'clock. I got a bunch more farther on the old bike back there, but I need to get some throttle cables and things for it because it feels like there's maybe a broken strand in the throttle cable. It does like a crunchy 
sound just like that when I put twist the throttle. So I pull them apart, get to order some things, and then uh, just been sitting here watching a drift competition on uh, YouTube, killing the rest of the day. I need to go pull my Corvette in and get it out of the rain because it does rain in Arizona from time to time. And uh, go home. I think that's it, eh? Eh. Eh. Yeah, eh. Yeah, tomorrow's Tuesday. Tomorrow we'll do more shit. We'll do more stuff. We'll build more bikes. Cruisingoriginals.com. Peace. <laughs>